Thank you so much for tuning in to the Glory Boys podcast. This week is a special episode. Join us as we walk through our faith journey, how we built a successful company, and answer questions at the end with the interns at My City Church. Here we go. opportunity of doing ministry together for three and a half years. Long time. I know. <laughs> and uh, sometimes it really closely, sometimes I'm not. Obviously, we've grown a lot together. Our department keeps growing. Um, and so, you know, obviously, we're all involved in the creative department. So I'm Pastor Adam, and uh, I'm our creative pastor. And who are you? And I'm Darren. I'm the executive marketing director. And I'm Austin. I'm the film director. That's right. And what else do you do? Uh, I am a dad. <laughs> I have a two-month-old daughter, Hazel. Nice. She's awesome. Come on now. You also own a company, right? Yes, we do. That thing you forgot about. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, tell me about that. Family. Yeah, I have a wife as well. <laughs> she comes first too, so there's that. Um, so yeah, we have uh, Glory Visuals. For those of you that don't know um, about us, we're a video production company here in Omaha, and uh, we started from right here at My City Church, really planted from within the church. And uh, yeah, excited to kind of share some of that story with you guys today. Yeah, it's awesome just to see too, um, for me, as your guys' influence has grown, people are in the audience making jokes about this. You guys obviously have a podcast that's brand new. We do, yeah. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Do it now, right? And Hit download. the bell, yeah. all and of the things. go to YouTube. And all of the things. That's right. Follow on social on all like 26 Leave us a platforms. rating, which like 17 of you guys already left us a rating. That's right. Was, Come we on. have a five-star rating in only two episodes. That's pretty sick. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. One of the things I want to hear, and I think that um, I want this to be uh, a conversation, and you guys are going to have the opportunity to ask questions a little later. So um, if you're thinking of them, write them down. Um, let's, let's, let's go deep today. But I want to hear for you guys a little bit about your faith stories. And... Uh, I want, I want people to experience like, hey, man, I found Jesus and this is where I am now. I think so often we get, we get disconnected. Yeah. We think, oh, those people just found success or, oh, they just started a thing and it blew up. No, there's a, there's a big backstory, yeah. you know, and I, I want to yeah. hear about that. Cool. Um, yeah, so my faith story, I grew up in North Fork, Nebraska, which is about two hours away from here. Um, yeah, Ray and Ismail, <laughs> there's a few North Fork, North Fork, North Forkians um, here, so... <laughs> Norfolk. It's whatever you want it to be. No. It's whichever one. It's I, I've heard stories of both ways that don't make sense. So um, <laughs> do what you want to do. Um, yeah, I grew up in Norfolk. I grew up Lutheran. Um, so had a lot of potlucks and uh, <laughs> Sunday school, vacation Bible school, the whole works. Um, and it was great. It was fun. I hated going, honestly, though, as a kid. Because it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't what we have or our kids our kids or anything like that. And so um, I, I had never really had a relationship with God. And so I just went to fill a religious checkbox um, because that was what my parents said I should do. My aunts and uncles went to the same church. So it was like, oh, we got to be in church this weekend because if not, you know, they'll think this of us or whatever. So it was, it was you know, that was what it was. And um, so, yeah, I really didn't have a relationship with God after high school. I moved to Lincoln, joined a fraternity did the whole fraternity thing. Um, I won't even go into that. Um, What's a fraternity? A fraternity is where 80 guys live in a house together, and it's terrible. It's a terrible idea. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, did that. And my sophomore year, um, funnily enough, I my roommate, who is just a hot mess, still is a hot mess, but he, he was a big part of my story. So he introduced me to this thing called Amway, showed me the plan in my, in my fraternity room. And uh, so I joined that and I was like super serious about that for several years. Um, and I don't, I don't regret it because that's how I met my wife. I showed her the plan at Scooters. Yeah, he did. Tried to get, you know, I'm like, I, I'm like, hey, I should probably get your number so I can follow up with you for business purposes. <laughs> so I got her number, you know, slid in there and, um, nice. and Right. And because it like, honestly, she wanted nothing to do with me for like eight months after that. But um, anyways, so through that, about like two months into me joining Amway, I went to a giant, um, a giant conference in Louisville, Kentucky. And there was like 
10,000 people there. They do a Sunday service. They do an altar call. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is, but it was a really awesome moment. And I remember yeah. sitting there and I'm like, I don't know if this is where God wants me to stay or I don't know if this is my destiny or whatever, but like this, I'm not here for no reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was kind of when I knew like that God had been steering me through a course this whole time. So good. Um, and then from there, I moved to Omaha, eventually got a job here. Uh, Casey, Casey and Andrea are my wife's aunt and uncle. And they're the reason that we were in Omaha, the reason that we came to my city. I know that a lot of you guys can say the same thing um, about them. But so, yeah, I got an opportunity to come up and work with Casey, moved to Omaha. And then right after that time was when my city was starting. So, yeah, I'll never forget the conversation in the parking lot. He's like, hey, I met this guy. He's starting a church here. It's really exciting. You should come check it out. And I did the next weekend and the rest is history. And look at you now. Um, (laughs) That was a good look at you now. You look good today. All right. Um, my faith story, I, I was a hot mess, like a big old hot mess. So, um, oh, do you need this? Oh, yeah. Take off Here you go. This one's louder anyway. Um, so for me, um, I grew up not in a Christian home by any means, um, fatherless home uh, with my mom and two sisters. And I think we went to church like at Christmas and stuff to like check the box or to go sing carols and hang out with grandparents. Really, that was it. Um, We had a Bible in our house a lot of the times, but it was just more of a decoration than something to read. Um, So that was, uh, so I always grew up knowing of God or wanting to believe, but not really understanding it. So, and my mom always like has been super positive and, oh, I pray to God all the time, but kind of didn't know what that meant. So, um, Yeah, fast forward, my parents divorced at five. Um, I started drinking super early on. I think I got drunk for the first time when I was 15 years old and just really like got lost in that culture. Um, And then um, I dropped out of high school when I was 16 years old to go on a tour with a Christian metal band. So um, that band is for today. They're no longer a band now, but they were the homies growing up. And uh, I just, I wanted to travel. I wanted to do cool things and see new places. And I told my mom and she actually kind of let me do it because she's like, you really hate school. And um, <laughs> so I was like, I don't know if that's good parenting or not, but I'm, I'm grateful. Um, so, but I did finish high school, long story short, but um, went on tour with this Christian metal band, not really understand, un- understanding God at all. Um, knowing of him, but not knowing him. The cool thing was, is we would do little Bible studies on this tour. So we would go to a stop, we'd play a show, meet a bunch of amazing people, and then we would do a Bible study in the van, outside, um, wherever that may be, and we would read the Bible. And I didn't understand what we were reading, but we were reading it. Um, We'd pray together, and we'd go to the next show. And so we did this for a long time. I think we went on a 30-day tour. You see a lot of states, you meet a lot of people, you read a lot of the Bible in 30 days. And Um, the one time that I did experience God for the first time really like reaching out to me was we showed up to a show that literally was supposed to be happening that night. And the guy that booked the show actually went to jail the night before. So the show was canceled. They were setting up for a wedding and we like rolled up. We're like, yeah, let's do this metal show. And there was like all these nice old ladies hanging up flowers. We're like, crap, this is not a show. We needed that gas money to get to the next show. Um, so long story short through that, they were believers. They let us stay at their home. They gave us money. They had us go to church with them that day. And I remember leaving that city being like, wow, God has to be real. We just got taken care of showing up to this show that wasn't happening. Homeboys in jail. We're not getting paid. Like we needed that money. And so we, we went to church with them and they handed us an envelope with a few hundred dollars and uh, blessed us with showers, you know, God bless for showers on tour because you don't take a lot of them. Um, But that was a big moment for me in experiencing God for the first time of like, wow, he's super real. He cares about me. He wants to take care of me. Fast forward through kind of ups and downs. So this was a pivotal moment in my faith journey. Uh, I was, so I was on tour. We got back home. And once you're at home, you're like, man, I'm waiting for the next tour. And Um, As they got bigger as a band, I kind of got less as an option to go. And so when I felt like they left for tour again, I felt like God left with them. So that was really, really tough for me. So I'm like, okay, what do I do? So uh, I was an idiot kid and and just went and started partying and hanging out with the wrong crowds. 
um, because they were off on tour and I thought God was with them and not with me. Many years of discontentment, um, just moving around a lot. I've been to 39 states. I've lived in a ton of places. I've had a ton of jobs. And uh, I, I moved to LA when I was 20 um, to work at Jimmy Kimmel Live with one of my best friends at the time. And uh, yeah, just packed a bag, first time ever flying, leaving my mom and my sisters and just left. And I'm like, I'm gonna go find that cool life that you watch on the Disney Channel that you hope to have one day. <laughs> and because everyone lives in LA and it's the cool thing to do. Um, and I loved skateboarding, I loved music. It was just, it just made sense. And Jimmy Kimmel's pretty dope. So went there, lived there for six months with my buddy and just got into like crazy drugs, crazy alcohol. Um, really just my life really turned hard. So working at Jimmy Kimmel Live, you get to know a lot of people and a lot of people that know people and can get into places that n normal people can't get into. And so because of that, it was an easy way to get drugs. It was an easy way to go to these after parties, underground raves. I mean, just you name it, I, I was going. And although at the time it felt really, really fun, um, it was eating away at my soul, at my purpose. Um, it was kind of my last chance of find, finding who I was, I guess. I remember one specific night and this, sorry, this is long, but my life is a hot mess. <laughs> Uh, I was in LA, I was really, really hammered, um, had popped some pills from some random lady, got pills from a buddy, and I'm walking down the street and I'm realizing that all of my friends that I was partying with are, aren't with me anymore. And I was like, man, this sucks. And I'm like, really messed up. I don't know, my phone's about to die. I get kind of frustrated, I go to this alleyway. This is what I think I remember, who knows? But I went to this alleyway, I laid down in, in this like area kind of, of like trash and garbage and, and a lot of homeless people. And I just laid there and I just remember being like, God, I, I'm done. Like just, I, I don't wanna wake up from all the stuff I just taken. I wanna just die, be good. I've tried it all, I've seen it all and nothing's fulfilling. And I just remember laying there and hearing the voice of God for the first time in my whole life saying, I have more for you. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just got goosebumps right now because I remember that moment so well. Um, and I, I was like, how? Like I've tried it all, I've done it all. You know, what's the purpose? And the beautiful thing was, very shortly after that, I was like, okay, LA is not for me. If I stay here, I'm going to die. Even though working at Jimmy Kimmel, it doesn't pay very well. And so I need to leave. So I came home um, and uh, I went to a church um, and the pastor was talking about stepping over the line fully, like fully committing yourself to him. And I'm like, I've always like, you know, gave up this and this, but I always held on to this and this. So, you know, I've never fully committed. Like I've never stopped drinking and doing drugs and having sex and being an idiot. Maybe I should try to give it all up and fully commit my life and see what happens. I've tried it all, everything else, why not? Like, what do I have to lose? And so I did, I, I gave up everything and I fully committed my life to Jesus. And that was August 13th, 2013. Shortly after that day, I got a job at a ministry, sweeping, cleaning a room similar like this, vacuuming. Um, shortly after, bought a guitar, started playing it. Shortly after, learned how to lead worship. Through that process, started a company called His Glory Productions. It was like photo, video, design, songwriting. You need your car washed. Like, <laughs> I mean, I literally offered every single service because homeboy was hustling and <laughs> I was like, I'm not working another nine to five. Um, so I started that business with amazing help from my mentors and my, um, my spiritual parents. And then got a call from a church. Um, I was leading worship in my small little town. That's not me. Get out of here. Telemarketers. Um, that's what happens when you own a business, by the way. Um, so got a call from a church, a local church. I was leading a small, small ministry worship center, a few people a day. And I got a call from a church in Sioux City called Sunnybrook. And they're like, hey, you know, we're going through a transition. We'd love to um, have you come just try out or sing or, or play or whatever. So I was like, this is amazing. So I obviously did and met cute Josh Andrew through that. Um, he was actually on my uh, youth worship team playing guitar. So that was sick. So did that for a long time. I actually got a part-time staff job. It was such a blessing. I'm like, I'm in a ministry. I'm getting paid for it. This is sick. Um, really, really enjoying it. Um, God called me to Omaha and in the midst of that, and I was kind of torn because I really felt like I found my spot, my place. 
and moved here for a job opportunity. We do not need to talk about the job opportunity, but let's just say it's no longer, it's rip. And um, yeah, uh, I, I met Pastor Jesse uh, February 28th, um, 20, what year, 2017. Um, I was supposed to meet him on the 22nd. So this is actually almost exactly four years. I was supposed to meet him on the 22nd, which is my birthday, but he stood me up, and so we had to meet one week later. <laughs> that was always my joke with him. Um, but met him. I just, there was something about him. I was like, man, you're just, you're hungry. You're a hustler. You're starting something really great. And I jumped on board that very day. And uh, because of that, it was cool because the process of meeting my wife at Sunnybrook. So there was a purpose in, in being there. Um, which is literally the biggest blessing in my entire life. Like, I would not be who I am today without her. Um, and her support for me to be like, hey, I'm going to use cameras to pay our bills. Is that okay? <laughs> and she said, yes, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she, she was going to move here already um, for nursing stuff. I was called here with a crappy job, ended up meeting Pastor Jesse. And then, uh, yeah. That's kind of the, the how we got here. Sorry, yeah. that was kind of long. No, it was great. It's, yeah. Yeah, just incredible to just, uh, the thing that I didn't hear in that is how in the heck did the two of you become the yeah. one that we know now? Yeah. So obviously we're total Not, opposites. Sorry, that sounded so weird. I mean, <laughs> I mean, let's just, let's just be honest. It's a, it's a big deal when uh, in the city of Omaha, you can post a two-letter abbreviation for a company, and a majority of the people, at least in our circles, like, know who you are. Like, yesterday, I posted an internship channel, and I just said, GV's coming. I don't ever say, like, oh, by the way, Darren and Austin are coming. Like, people don't say that anymore. And uh, so I say one, but, like, there's actually, like, crazy power in that. And uh, so I just want, I, th I think we all want to hear that story. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Um, it's pretty clear that God brought us together because we could not be further God from different, more you. different from each other. Um, we are almost complete opposites, which is, it works because we cover each other's weaknesses. So I met Darren for the first time. And for those of you that have watched episode one of the podcast, I apologize. So you've probably heard some of this already. And if you haven't watched it, go watch it. Um, <laughs> So I met Darren serving coffee. It was the one and only time I ever served coffee at my city church. Um, I'm not good with people. That's why, that's why Darren, that's why, Darren, that's why Darren's perfect for me. So um, I met Darren. Darren should have been the one serving coffee, but he walks up with a camera, a fancy camera. I knew what it was, and I knew it was expensive. And I'm like, hey, you must like to take photos. And uh, he's like, well, I, I take photos full time. So yeah, I guess you could say that. And... Uh, he doesn't remember this, but I remember feeling like a total idiot because I kind of, I looked up to him because the camera was cool. I'd never met him before, so I had no reason to really look up to you, like, personally. <laughs> but I was like, oh, it's a cool camera. So I look Thanks, up to bro. you, you know, you have a cool camera. So, yeah, so I thought, I was like, man, I'm an idiot. That was a stupid question to ask. Um, obviously, he likes taking photos. You know, you don't buy an expensive camera if you don't like taking photos, Austin. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's how we met. Um, he doesn't remember it, didn't think anything else of it. Um, and then I remember us like touching base a couple weeks later and I was mostly just like wanting to nerd out over camera stuff cause that's the, that's how I am. And so I remember we sat down like in the first row at church one week and just, I like looked at your camera. You had a cool lens that I knew that I wanted. And then, you know, I had just bought a camera, I think around that time. Um, and so, which at that time I was working for a wedding filmmaker here in town. That's kind of where I got my experience. Um, and that's a whole a whole other God story of why I got picked for that because I have no idea why. I had no experience, no reason for him to really pick me. But um, he did, so that's how I got to really learn how to make films and shoot video and all of that stuff. Um, so yeah, met Darren at church. We started kind of nerding out. And then you became the digital content director and at then, some point. So we, he jumped on team. We started shooting some content together. And then uh, Pastor Jesse wanted to uh, do an original like the second series ever at my city church wanted to do something the original. The church. The church. The bride of Christ. Watch the video, you'll get the joke. But uh, so he had this voiceover and I was like, oh, Austin, we should go shoot this. This will be so fun. We can shoot it at 6 p.m. and it has to be due by 11 p.m. Let's, let's see if we can do it. And uh, we, so we like 
jumped in a car, went downtown, found like the biggest cathedral that we saw. I don't even know what it's called. I'm not from here. It's like yeah, a, I don't know. It's one. Of, it's a it's Catholic really church on like 16th, and it's down. It's really pretty but, yeah. and huge. So we like flew the drone and got a couple shots. I still didn't even know how to use the camera that Austin had. And anyway, long story short, we made something happen and shot some stuff and put together a video. We didn't have an office space, so my lovely wife let us edit in the basement until like midnight. And uh, we got it all done and wrapped it up and put it on Vimeo. And I just remember this exhilarating feeling of working on something, getting it done, and feeling really proud about what we put together. I still really love that video. It has a special place in my heart because it was the first thing that really sparked that moment that, like, I want to do this forever. And um, so, yeah, then we watched it at church the next day as the bumper, and it was like, our movie's being shown on the big screen. Like yeah, that was the first time. It was like smaller than this, <laughs> but it was it was pretty cool. So that was a big moment for us. Obviously, there's been so much since then, and so like for you guys, as you know, it's probably been what about three years down the track now that you guys started Glory Visuals. Yeah, coming up on three years. So coming up on three yeah, April sixth will be three years officially since we went full time. But we were well in the process of starting the brand, getting things going at this time. Mm-hmm. Totally, and I, I won't I won't belabor, but it's just it's funny. For you guys in the whole journey, um, how this has grown and evolved, how your company has grown and evolved, uh, evolved. You now have a your first employee, um, which is awesome, by the way. Shout um, out to Bray. That's Bray Stone right back there. Woo! But uh, I, B Ray, that's right. And uh, I'm I'm just so encouraged because I watched you guys. I remember working with you in the basement, um, like the the office basement, if you can recall. <laughs> Um, where like we didn't leave, <laughs> like we basically just lived, lived there all the time, and uh, but everything from like you know I, brands that I won't say their name because I don't want them to see this, but like they were just awful to be honest. Like projects that just the worst, like dog food companies and you know mouth guard companies and those companies. If you you know those companies, um, and just doing like just crap work at times to pay the bills and figure it out and work through it. But for you guys now, like just encouraging like, hey, you guys have a a film company, specifically in the wedding industry, that like is, hey, like you're charging the most of really anybody in the region. You guys are still sought after so much for what you do in that space. Um, Your commercial uh, division really is growing and growing and growing. with every passing week, you're taking on new companies, more projects. Um, but that was a journey. And I think the, the, where I want to land this conversation today is like, hey, how, how have you brought interconnectivity? Um, and specifically, like, how have you learned to have a kingdom mindset with your business? Because the, the reality is, not only are you growing your team, see that I think for me, like one of the things I'm so proud of of you guys is that, hey, like you, you are growing not only your team here, digital content, your film team, your video team, like you view those people as people to potentially be future employees. Like we're, we're using the church, we're growing people. We say, we believe in the leadership potential of every person on our team. Hey, what better way than to teach them a super valuable skill and then provide for them in a meaningful way? Like I think there's just so much power in that. And uh, so unravel that for me. Like, for you guys, like, hey, you prayed at the beginning of this last podcast. Like, I see you guys weaving this into everything that you do. And uh, I think we all could learn from that. Well, it all goes back to the name. I mean, it was His Glory Productions before. And when I met Darren and we wanted to start a company, I knew that I wanted the word visuals. And we liked that the word glory was in the name um, because... It, we never, you know, I don't know that it's ever been something we've like shouted in people's faces, but we wanted it to be pretty obvious when you look at our brain. We wanted it to permeate everything that we do, every decision that we make. And so, yeah, when we started out, I think having that kingdom mindset from the beginning is the only, the only way that what has happened has happened. Because if I were to answer like, how did we get here from where we were? I have no freaking clue. Like it doesn't, cause it doesn't make sense to me because of how little we've done in the way of marketing and like cold calling and, and stuff like that. And the way that we've done it, um, blessing has just seemed to flow our way. Um, and I think that is because we've always came at it with that kingdom mindset. So, yeah, it's really hard to explain God and, and his plans and purposes, but it's really cool when you start to live them out and you see them unfold and you just, 
I almost just got choked up in a, a second ago because it's like to be able to sit here and say like we feed three families with this company and provide for our wives and our kids and and it's just it's it is God. Last year was one of the hardest years ever, but it was still our second biggest year. This year is going to be our third biggest year. You know, every year we're growing, but even through the trials and tribulations and things that we go through. Um, not having business degrees and having to figure a lot of this stuff out. God's been so faithful. And um, yeah, that's the beautiful thing. Um, we love, and I won't go into a ton of this, but like a lot of times before COVID, we'd meet with brides and we would just, hey, like, can we just pray for you in your day, whether you hire us or not? Or like the other day we prayed with our CPA, <laughs> like, because she was going through a lot. I just asked how she was doing and she was like, everything's terrible. And she just had gone through like the worst stuff. And it's just, it's not to do that. And I don't even say that to like, hey, we're spiritual and we pray with people. You guys all pray with people. But the point is, is as a business leader, yeah. I'm not gonna go anywhere without somebody knowing that I love Jesus yeah. and that I believe in God and that what we do is literally for his glory. So, And I think one thing that came to mind, you were just sharing that. I think of the passage in Luke 22 where it says that the servant of all, it literally says that the, the one that wants to lead would become like the younger and that he uh, who is the servant will become the leader. And I've watched you guys and I hear, obviously like I'm a little bit in this industry too. Obviously my wife and I started a company this last year and uh, are, have learned so much from you guys, just to be honest. Like we, you say that we wouldn't be where we are without you. And one of the things that I, you can be on any shoot with you guys for more than five minutes and realize the difference between you and any other company that I've been around in this space is that you serve people. It doesn't matter if it's a bride on her wedding day. You are, you are there. You don't care if you get the shot. I'm here for you. I'm here that you have fun. I hear that, I'm here that you have a blast. Like this wedding, you'll never forget it because you understand that the, the visual aspect of that is that, hey, if we can help them have a great experience, the video is going to be better. People don't think that way, though. People don't think, hey, if I bring Jesus into this conversation, hey, actually, like, my business is going to grow. We have this innate fear of, like, man, oh, what are people going to think? Or what are people going to say? When the sad thing is the, the total opposite is actually the truth, right? And this is, you know, and I, I want to hear from you guys, like, hey, like, what, from that perspective of service, like, what can other business owners, what can other people in this room who have aspirations to start a business, like, what values, what things are you putting into your everyday life, culture, when you're on a shoot? Like, what are you doing to really bring that to life? I just always look at it in the car before we jump into a wedding day. We're about to walk into the house or the hotel or whatever that may be where the bride's getting ready. And we have to make a choice that we're here to serve the bride. And sometimes Austin's in a bad mood. <laughs> sometimes... Austin's wow, still in a bad mood. Yeah. <laughs> I'm He's mostly never in a bad mood. No, but like, it, there just is this dynamic where I'm That's like, why hey we man, work well together. Let's like this, like let's pick it up, and and we have to make a choice. And that there's no difference in serving on a team on Sundays. You know, like we're not going to bring our crap into the church. We're going to be in, be there and serve and love people. And it, it, that's just where we always land. Um, and so I think as we do that, God honors that, yeah. and. Yeah, it just yeah, it's all about serving people. We talk about all the time. We're gonna do a podcast episode on this, but like people in the wedding industry, if you don't like people, you should leave the wedding industry. That's just a word for you. Write it down. Just go work at Costco. Like, you know, actually no, there's people there and they're really nice. Don't work at Costco. But you know what I mean. I love it. Well, hey, I wanna I wanna kind of turn the the corner here and just say, guys, I. I couldn't be more proud of you. Like, I really genuinely mean that from the bottom of my heart. And you are two of my favorite people to lead, to, to have as friends. Um, my wife and I both, like, I, it's funny. You guys met your wives other places. I met my wife at my city. She was on the digital content team. Um, and just to watch her grow. I know, right? Thank you. Um, Chicken nugget girl. <laughs> Huh? Chicken nugget girl. Yeah, chicken nugget girl. Hey, by the way, if you didn't know this, Austin didn't like my wife. I first. didn't not like her. She didn't like my wife at first. Um, I'm going to put this it's on the public true. record. I'm going to put this on the public record. He said, I don't know if she's wife material. And I was wrong. So wrong. Yeah, I was wrong. 
This is my public, public statement. I was wrong. <laughs> Abby, you're awesome. But uh, it's been so cool and just so many memories and so much over the last three and a half years. I couldn't help but think um, I wanted to get you guys up here and just let you guys share, get people to know you a little bit better. Um, and uh, what for me, like I, I, I've sat in your seats before and I've thought to myself, man, like what if I could ask people anything, like what would I ask them? And uh, I, I just want to open it up today. And it, Pastor Eric, I'm going to give you this microphone and uh, just let you take it around to people. And let's, hey, let's go there. Um, what questions maybe you have about starting a business or, hey, what does it look like to, to be or get to this level? You know what I mean? I can start a first question while you guys think of one. Um, when growing your business, what was the initiation of growth? Was it you had a vision for the next thing or you had incoming clients so you were forced to grow? Which one, chicken or the egg in that? I would say clients probably. Um, and But I think it was, there was vision there for sure, but it was more... Um, that we need to establish ourselves. We need to, you know, we need to meet people. We need to network. And so those first few months were a ton of that, going to networking events, um, meeting people, building relationships. And with that too, like with that kingdom mentality, you can't, when you go into that with a desire to get something from it, I think um, you can kind of rob yourself of the blessing. So having the kingdom mentality with that is you're going in there, you're, you're meeting people to figure out how you can add value to them. Um, because if you focus on that, the value will be returned to you hundredfold. I think that the, the way that we're able to charge what we charge now is because we started from the very beginning. Our, one of our very first like core values as a company was we will over deliver. We will provide more value than we charge by multiples always. And so um, we've tried to always hold that. And so as, as time goes on and we've gotten clients who can afford the, the higher budgets, we've been able to raise our prices because we've always been providing more value than we were charging. So, When you're providing for non-believers, so if you have like clients that are non-believers, how do you go into that situation with a kingdom mindset? Obviously, it's just implanted in us as believers. But genuinely going in and being like, hey, I know they don't believe, but what's an opportunity to like, get them there or plant that seed. Those are my favorite people yeah. <laughs> because this is why um, I used to be really over the top. Like I love Jesus and everyone has to know. Ask my wife. <laughs> She's like, he's kind of weird. <laughs> I still kind of am. Um, but you go into situations like that with a mindset of, Hey, I'm here to serve you too. And if I'm the only reflection of Jesus you'll ever see in your whole life, I'm going to be the best one. Yep. And so that's being smart asking God for wisdom, how to operate in that. If, if they're really standoffish and like kind of mad, like you're not gonna go and like invade their space and be really on, on top, like screaming at them and, and whatever. You're just gonna serve them. You're gonna assess the situation and you're just gonna love them in the way that they need to be loved at that time. So if it's like subtle little things, like we'll meet all the time, like a dad at the bride and he's like, you just get, you get kind of weird vibes and you just kind of throughout the day, you just like, hey man, like, thanks so much for having us being here. Just love, it's a simple thing. Hold a door, hand a water bottle, you know, little things could make such an impact. And by the time we leave, dad's like, hey, we love you guys. Oh, and we're like, we love you too, man. And so does God. <laughs> we sneak that one in. He had a couple drinks anyway. He won't remember. But that's, that's really how, does that answer your question? Hi, guys. Love you guys. Hi. You're great. <laughs> um, how would you, when you first started out, what was, like, the biggest form of, like, communication that just, like, worked well for you? I know you talked about, like, cold calling or emails or Facebook or, like, what was it that, like, really was, like, this is how we contact people. Yeah, I think it depends on what type of business you're trying to start. Because of the industry that we're in, especially with weddings, just in person, meeting people, yeah. learning the who's who in the industry. Like, that's really where you, I think, want to live in the wedding industry specifically and in a lot of service-based industries too. Um, but, yeah, so that's really what we focused on early on was we just met a ton of people. We, you know, first, obviously, you want to explore your low-hanging fruit. Who do you know? 
Um, and so Darren had a lot of connections. I had a few. He had way more than me. But we have like clients that to this day came from our personal connections or a referral of a personal connection. And so obviously you want to go down that route first. And then, yeah, we, we went to a ton of networking meetings. I mean, when we didn't have anything else to do, that was what we filled our time with, was meeting people, reaching, even reaching out to companies on Facebook, setting up meetings. I mean, people generally are pretty, pretty receptive if, if they feel that you're, again, you're coming, approaching, trying to add value to them and not get something from them. They're pretty receptive to it, is yeah. what I found. That's great. Yeah, just wear all black and show up to places, and people will remember you. <laughs> My question is, Austin, why don't you like me? No, I'm just kidding. Um, he does. Next question. <laughs> um, no, I think a lot of people probably wonder this. Just because you guys are so busy all the time, like I, pers like I see your lifestyle between church and businesses, but like how do you keep your wives and your family first, even when it's so hard, but how do you like go back to that? Babe, you want to come up here? <laughs> No, we, so Austin and I have been so blessed to do what we do and our wives fully support it. And it's, we wouldn't be able to do it and we wouldn't choose to do it if that weren't the case. Um, so that's number one. Number two, like just the normal things we talk about at church, date nights, making sure that you're intentional with your time, even though it may seem like you don't have a bunch of it sometimes. Um, but I think that's sometimes also I, th I believe that there is more time than we really think there is. Yeah. And it's just learning to manage it better over time is really how, how we've done it. Yeah, don't be fooled. We're not 100% productive, busy people. Um, <laughs> if you follow us on social media, you know that to be true. Sometimes I like feel bad because I'll like not respond to a text from my wife. And I know she sees our Instagram stories of us like dancing to this OT Genesis <laughs> song on social media. And I'm like... Frick, I should probably respond. So, um, yeah, don't don't be fooled. But yeah, um, I was gonna say something to that. So yeah, balancing that, and um, I think it's so important and something that obviously we did because we planted from within a church. And so um, having the community that we've had is so powerful. Um, having people that are able to counsel you and help you see things from a vantage point. Adam, that's been you over these last few years. Like I remember we had a conversation because both of us were in a really unhealthy spot with our rhythm, with our time management. Um, we were, you know, in a spot where we didn't have the amazing team we have today. So we were grinding on church stuff, trying to start a business, trying to, you know, you just got married recently. I was still pretty newly married. And so yeah. um, we didn't do it very well for a long time. And I remember you coming to us and you're like, guys, you need to start taking Fridays off. And just simple stuff like that, having people that can see that from an outside perspective and say, hey, have you thought of this? Like you guys are working six days a week and then Sunday you're on worship and doing this. And, and so that's seven days a week. And so um, you don't need to feel guilty about taking Friday off because the Lord commands a day of Sabbath. And so um, helping us see, see that was a big thing too. So. I just want to know, what's your guys' vision for your company? That's a really big loaded question. I would say as we started the company, we did a lot of jobs we didn't want to do to get to where we are. I would say that we're 20% of the way of where we want to go. And it's just, it's a slow growth kind of process. Um, but the vision for Glory Visuals is to essentially um, be the premier wedding film company in the entire U.S., um, so that's one of the branches, though. Wedding films is not our passion. Um, we just happen to be good at it, and they happen to pay really well. So we, we do them. I mean, it's just math. We wouldn't have been able to hire Bray if, you know, we didn't do weddings. Um, so that's just, like, one little piece. As Glory Visuals as a whole, like, we want to be able to do, I mean, top commercials and short films and documentaries and and really like storytelling and really operating in roles that we're starting to learn like Austin's really learning how to DP and I won't go into like film like technical terms but like I'm really loving directing like having a vision of what that looks like and so as those roles grow 
I don't necessarily have an answer for you, but what I do say is we're not even close to where we want to be. And I have massive, we both have massive visions of, of where we want to go. And we're just taking those little steps on the way. That's actually a big part of my relationship with these guys is helping them goal set and be strategic about their year goals, their seasonal goals. And uh, just a, just like open transparency, like you guys really desire this next year to, to more or less 2X your entire business. And so for you guys, it's even right now, you see this long-term picture of where you want to go, but you have milestones along in the journey. And so like, hey, for you guys, as you're thinking about vision, like, hey, you, you do want to blow up in the industry here. Um, you, you believe because of what we have going on in the technology we have today, you can do it here. You don't have to go somewhere. Um, and so, hey, you're going to exhaust that, you know, to the fullest. Um, and so, yeah, keep that in mind. Tyler? Uh, it goes right in line with my question. But um, I actually got a bunch of my Connect cards I was praying over this morning. Three of them were about, God, show me my, show me my calling. Or I know I'm supposed to do this, but I'm here. And I think we're even in a little bit of a season right now of like waiting and like, okay, we know what we're supposed to do, but God, how do we get there or what is there? And uh, it's so, I guess, if you could speak to even that or even like if you could look at like 20-year-old Darren, who's a mess, who, you know, who's like, you know, or you look at Austin, who's in a frat, you know, Amway, all of that. If you could give them advice on, you guys are at this point where you're like, hey, I know there's more for me. I don't know what that looks like. Like, if you could give any advice to the younger you or to some of where I think a lot of us are at on everybody in this room has dreams and callings, but how do we get to that point? If you could speak to that a little bit. What I would tell 20-year-old Darren, stop it! Guys, this is the... This is the question, I mean, every person on my team has, everyone at our church has, you know, what's my purpose? What, you know, I know God has so much for me, but why isn't it happening? The thing that I would speak to that is patience is super, super key. Um, like I just mentioned a second ago, like we are not even close to where we want to go. The countless hours, the countless jobs, the countless, I mean, you name it we're not even close to doing what we like really are passionate about. And so that those are just like building blocks to where we want to go. I don't I don't want to hustle wedding films forever. I don't want to do these small mom and pop shops forever. I have dreams to do things that are different. And um you know, Pastor Eli didn't dream of putting tiny little windows in buildings and then now he's doing like the best buildings in the entire you know, in the whole city. And every time we drive past, hey, I did those. And I'm like, those are sick. Those windows are sick, pastor. <laughs> those are shiny and they don't leak, right? They don't leak. But, but you, don't, you don't start, you don't just start where you want to be. I would say for you particularly, you have an espresso machine. You have a coffee cart. You have some tools. I mean, honestly, you got to just plug it in at your house and start offering $3 a cup and we roll up to your house and buy a coffee. It's just, it's just, it's, it's taking, it's taking an action forward, not knowing where you're going to go, but knowing God's called you to it. That's the beautiful thing. God's called you to it. So stepping out of the boat a little bit, you're not going to sink. There's a, I remember when we were early on um, watching a video at Stephen Furtick interviewing Bishop T.D. Jakes. And uh, I don't know if you haven't seen that or not, but that really helped me. Um, he talks about you like you don't ever know like if you're if you've arrived at your purpose or if you're like currently what like you just kind of stumble into like what he you know the the coffee thing may not be the thing but it's the thing that would lead to the thing and so you just have to you just have to get in love with the journey and get on the journey and follow the journey and you'll God will yeah again you can stumble God won't let you fall but he's gonna you can stumble into his purposes for you. So yeah, watch that if you haven't. It's really awesome. I want to just touch on a couple of different notes of what you just asked, Tyler, but just to wrap up this whole story, what I've observed in you guys. Um, number one, uh, you, were do you were willing to do whatever it took. And uh, for me, that's a key fundamental. If you want to write something down from today, are you willing to do whatever it takes? Yeah. And, if, and if there's any part of you that says... <clears throat> that's what you need to work on first. Because if you go, <clears throat> that means in the moment of pressure, in the heat of the moment running your business, you're gonna go, <clears throat> and that can't fly. Um, 
Number two, uh, Austin, you left a like you left a job. Like you had to be like, all right, Callie, I don't know if I'm gonna make money next month, but uh, here we go. You know what I mean? And like you had to do that. Technically, I didn't leave the job. I was I was forced to leave, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, take the risk. Like at what at some point you're gonna come. You're doing whatever it takes. There's gonna come a point of decision where you have to say, I have to either poop or get off the pot stay in the boat, get out of the boat, whatever version of that you like, you know what I mean? But like, you have to do it. Like, I like the poop version too. So like, hey, are you gonna do it or not? You know what I mean? And there has to be this point of like, yes. I said yes. That means I'm gonna go, right? Just to really double down on this, if you have a dream to start something to whatever, these guys up here are really passionate about helping you do that. Yeah. So like, ask anyone, I mean, Josue, like, other companies, like you mentioned, like, I kind of want to start. Hey, do you need anything? Like, we will literally do that for you. So there's no excuse. Like, I want to help everyone start. A, it's a, a personal goal of mine yeah. to literally start a company that helps other companies start a company. Yeah. So, and I want to do that for, for my family first. Lastly, um, I just, I say that all to say, if you guys, you know, you, you're thinking about starting um, we're all open doors. Like, you know where we are. You know how to find us. Um, and uh, we, we will do our best. We're not perfect at this, but we will do our best to make time for you and uh, sit down with you. If, if nothing else, have an hour-long conversation, help you unravel your ideas. Um, but uh, guys, we, we as a church, including everybody in this internship, couldn't be more grateful for you, for your expertise, your impartation, um, even, even down to just the way that you guys, through visuals, um, help people encounter God um, is beautiful. And so I just want to take a second and pray over you. If you all would stand to your feet, we're going to pray over them. And uh, just play, pray that uh, the word that just came to mind was a year of plenty. And uh, that there would just be this powerful um, kind of uh, outpouring um, upon them, on their business, everything they touch. So can we do that? God, I thank you so much for Darren and Austin. I thank you so much for the company Glory Visuals. I thank you for Bray. I thank you for all that they're doing, not only in my city church, but around our city, around our nation. God, would you help them grow their influence? God, we say uh, there's exponential growth on their podcast, that there's new listeners that are gonna be, they're gonna be tuned in to the sweetness of your Holy Spirit flowing in and through them, God, that people will be attracted to it in a way that is, is only from you, God. We pray over their business right now. We pray over every division. We pray over weddings and believe that there are brides right now that glory visuals is coming to their mind right now in this moment they're filling out interest forms they're filling out contact forms they're reaching out to them for a wedding film because you're pouring out blessing because of the faithfulness that you've put on them that, that they've walked in these last few years god we thank you for their commercial influence god that there is a a new level of influence coming in the business space and in the in the commercial space we know that you're going to do it we know that you're pouring it out upon them right now god because of their faith because of, of who you are in them, God. And so would they help people all around them see you? God, in every, in every situation, in every business deal, in every interaction, God, that you, you would be so known through everything that's said, everything that is done, every video that is produced, God. And we thank you that they're gonna reap a harvest for all of the sowing that they've done this year. We believe this is a year of plenty. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen.